Welcome to Camping with Steve. I'm here today doing some regular, normal camping with beautiful wife. There's nothing stealthy going on, nothing illegal today, but we're in the Alberta Badlands and we're really just enjoying a nice regular camping trip uh, with some glamping. Our vehicle is packed to the brim with gear. <laughs> we could not bring any more with us. So this is like complete luxury glamping type of camping that we're about to attempt. So it should be easy. We'll have power, we'll have good meals, we'll have a campfire. Uh, what more could you ask for? Let's go camping. We're in a regular campsite, uh, the way everybody I know actually goes camping in real life. Um, we got a ton of stuff that we're gonna haul out of here. And then we'll, oh boy, a lot of stuff. Uh, there is uh, interesting geological features here in the Canadian Badlands. Uh, things that I never see anywhere else. You got uh, coolies, buttes, hoodoos for crying out loud. Uh, they're all over the place and we're gonna do a lot of exploring to check those out. And of course, you gotta bring firewood. They just don't let you um, rummage around all these dying old cottonwoods and take what you want because uh, there'd be nothing here at all if everybody did that. It's still technically winter so we've got the insulated ice shack but it's about five degrees Celsius right now so it's got to be 40 something Fahrenheit um, so refrigerator temperature but this weather is an absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure to be setting stuff up in and walking around. It'll cool off a bit tonight, but uh, there's power, so we're gonna plug in a space heater, and we've also got propane in the, in the big buddy heater as well. Right on. Well, there's owls that have been hooting at us already, so could be a noisy night, I don't know. Uh, I'm just going to throw this bed together. Uh, beautiful wife can relax because she gets a little car sick and uh, she takes a gravel so she doesn't barf. And um, it, it makes her sleepy. So we're going to get things set up so she can take a siesta. And then I'm going to walk around and see some, some of the scenery. Like on the way down, we couldn't believe what we were looking at. Now I came here when I was younger as like a boy in Air Cadets for a trip. Uh, but I appreciate it a lot more as a full-grown. Like, this is actually incredible. And the history, uh, there's a whole bunch of, uh, it's called Writing on Stone Provincial Park. Because uh, there are carvings uh, in the rock and everything from, uh, from, you know, thousands of years ago. So we're going to go investigate and probably we'll all learn something today. Well, before I head on the trails, I'm going to boost my electrolytes. A little bit of Boomtown Lager uh, from Medicine Hat Brewing Company. That's the localish kind of place that we found today um, that was being sold here. I, I just like to try out little beers from the towns uh, we're going through or the areas we're going through and supporting them as much as we can. So let's taste this. It came in a variety pack. Uh, there are a few different ones you'll probably see me enjoying throughout the evening. Hmm. Oh, it's it's hoppy. Register at the booth here. Um, Twenty nine dollars a night with electricity. Twenty one without. Normally we'd do without, but uh, it's nice to have the power. Because not every trip has to be some super extreme thing, right? So, deposit in the envelope. I always like to make sure it goes all the way down the chute. Because they like to get stuck there and then somebody could yoink it out and they'd tell you you didn't pay. So let's go check out these uh, landscape features. So we're going to get into what makes this certain little park special here. But... Uh,
you can see interesting geological features. Sandstone is grippy. If anyone is not actually up to terms on Badlands definition of geography, uh, Cooley is like a steep valley ravine thing. A butte is an abrupt hill that comes out of nowhere. And these uh, curious, impossible looking things behind me, like they're out of uh, Looney Tunes, uh, that's a hoodoo. So they're all over the place. And I don't know how they're still standing. If cartoons have taught me anything, you bump into one of them and they all come tumbling down. So here we are. There's going to be a lot of exploring on this tomorrow. Pack a lunch and walk through here. But we should uh, walk around a little bit more, get back to the campground, and start prepping dinner because we're going to lose our daylight here in about an hour. Yeah. Seems like around here, time moves a little slower, things are a little simpler, people are a lot more honest. Ten dollars a bundle, deposit envelopes here for firewood, and a stack of three bundles. It's beautiful. So there's been quite a bit of majesticness here. Uh, the deer, the pheasant, uh, the bunny rabbit, the general landscape. but. Uh, it's about time to start a fire because things are getting majestically cold. I'm sure I've mentioned before, but uh, my petroleum distillate of choice for igniting a uh, campfire is barbecue starter. There's a bunch of other ones. Some are more explosive, some are louder, but this one just works. Typical setup in here, as always, we got the two cots, foamy on top. Beautiful wife's got a nice powerful sleeping bag. I got old Yeller back here, and uh, that's what we're doing here. Got our space heater down there which is doing a pretty good job. Um, then we also have a backup Mr. Buddy heater down there. Now we just got that on low because it's going to be a little chilly tonight. Um, and, you know, if people follow the channel, I really don't need to get too in-depth into this tent. But, uh, yeah, this this will be home for the night. Now, actually, it is it is a real, a real cozy tent. I love this thing. Perfect for shoulder season camping, um, spring and fall. Uh, and winter, of course. Uh, wouldn't use it in the summer, though. Things would be uh, pretty stinking hot. But, uh, yeah, let's get some food going. I don't know what you guys are eating for dinner, but around here it's campfire nachos. Uh, yes, it's one of those pans from the infomercials. Uh, I'm not sure how good they are, really, but... This should tell you something, is I picked it up from a thrift store, and it's actually in this decent of a condition. So, we'll see. I basically uh, just Google camping recipes. I have no idea if they work. Uh, I've never done them before. But I really don't see how this could go wrong. Just like making tacos on Taco Tuesday. The campfire nacho recipe that I found uh, is just like making normal nachos, except you put them in this, put foil on them, and stick them on the campfire. And allegedly, within 15 minutes or so, it'll be good. Uh, don't put them directly on the flame, that type of thing. Of course, I don't need to explain how to make nachos because. Uh, it's like the first thing everybody learns how to cook. Um, <clears throat> the always contentiously pronounced Texas Mexico cheese. Um, I'm assuming that's what Tex Mex stands for. Oh, 
All right. Save some cheese for an omelet in the morning. Oh, taco nacho omelet. That'd be good. And just throw on our usual suspect, of course. I have no idea if this is going to work. Uh, it could be a scorched mess uh, by the time I pull it off of that fire, but I'll keep a close eye on it. Make sure, uh, make sure nothing untoward happens. Okay. If this actually works, this will be one of the cooler camping meal standbys to throw on my list of tricks. This should work, and it's uh, helped keeping all those hard-working folks in the aluminum industry going. Yeah. That fire's burned down quite good, so it shouldn't scorch this thing. Um, I just pray that it actually cooks it. Maybe I'll throw another log in. Just a little guy. truth is here it doesn't uh, doesn't smell burned what does she look like unbelievable I uh, I was not expecting a result like that so yeah this will work <laughs> all right uh, dinner's on She'll be right out, and uh, we're gonna dig into these uh, this feast, this nacho feast. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna do this again on camping. It worked. Like I'm always scared when I see these little recipe things that it's gonna be uh, and it's gonna burn, or you know, the campfire will be too hot, too cold, or whatever. But this this worked. Proof the concept right here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look at that. Cheese perfectly melted. Not uh, not burned on the bottom or nothing like that. Oh yeah. Well look at that. The smoke is just going right in your face, just as if we're actually out here camping. <laughs> uh that meal is fantastic. The nachos are uh gonna get added to the list of camping meals for me because I give that a solid five golden rockets. Like, that was incredible. Just making up some hot chocolate here. The beautiful wife and I are going to clamor into bed, and sorry, I'm probably giving people uh, flashbacks and uh, nightmares about all this smoke flying in the face. So, we'll get the uh, nighttime time lapse set up and uh, hunker down. Second hot chocolate of the day here. The uh, campfire couldn't quite bring this water up to temperature and I didn't want to put on a bunch more wood because out here, a precious commodity, that stuff's expensive. All right, and the final touch. this into beautiful wife and uh, then I'll make myself one and it will be a good cozy night okay uh, off to bed in the nice fancy tent and uh, yeah a lot of hiking to do tomorrow so I'm gonna need my rest we'll see you guys in the morning
Good morning. Really slept in today. <laughs> I think it's about noon. Um, that's one of the things with all these windows blocked out. You really don't know what time it is, so you just wake up when you've had enough sleep. That's a very rare occurrence when I'm camping. Usually it's like steaming hot in the morning, the sun's beating on you, or it's so cold you could barely sleep through the night. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to get a sandwich uh, built, and I'm going to hit the trails because uh, it's a lot more daylight these days, but there's still not a ton of it. So I want to use what I can to see what's out there, and it sure is windy. We'll have to tie this this sucker down. Uh, Southern Alberta is known for wind, and uh, we're getting it today. It's a chilly north wind, but we're going to go check this uh, park out to make a sandwich and uh, see what's out there to be seen. So there's a petroglyph down here that's supposedly extremely impressive uh, of a big battle scene and it's closed. I am going to respect that of course because that's the right thing to do and also this will be all over YouTube and I'll get busted in about a second if I walk across that uh, barrier. <laughs> Oh, the wind is really whistling through the prairies up at the top of the hill. Back down in the valley here, we're going to wander through the hoodoos. And this area was very special to the Blackfoot, and still is, and you can see why. It's nothing but miles of nothing, as far as you can see, and suddenly you come to this remarkable little scar in the earth with uh, really interesting features. So I packed up some food, I packed up some beverage, and uh, I'm just going to wander around, and hopefully uh, we can see a little bit more of this rock art. Uh, there is lots of rock art that Blackfoot had put in here uh, all over the place. Sadly, there's been some vandalism, so we're probably going to see some of that. But uh, we're going to see if we can find some nice authentic rock art in this uh, maze of hoodoos. This is so cool. Uh, I got one good news and two bad newses. Uh, the good news is there's a lot less wind in here, so that's great. Bad news is I saw a snow particle falling down and the temperatures dropped about 8 degrees Celsius in the last couple hours here last few hours this afternoon and I'm also seeing graffiti already unbelievable Well, this is just extremely cool. I don't usually have the urge to play hide and seek, but I could totally go for a game in here. Oh, graffiti, graffiti, graffiti. I think all the authentic rock art is probably kept on the guided tour sections to make sure people keep their car keys in their pockets. But yeah, you can really see the potential for for people to try and vandalize things. Uh, I'm actually surprised they had this area open to the public. And uh, oh boy, don't want to go down there. Oh great! Yeah. Somebody threw an empty bottle down there, so I'll probably have to shimmy down there and try to grab that. Fear of heights and better judgment allowed me to find a better route down here than, than these paths that I would have originally taken. Ha 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 ha. Perfect spot for a little break, sitting down on nature's sandstone bench. 
not a bad view if I might add. Hiking down to the river to see what caused all this damage to the landscape, in a true Alberta Parks fashion, not shortly after we got here, there was a truck moving in some of these things. They're uh, little luxury camping cabins uh, for people to enjoy, which is okay, I guess. The more people that can experience nature, the better, I think. And uh, camping is a wide spectrum that goes all the way from survivalism to RVing on the other end and now um, little cabins. So just uh, different ways to enjoy the outdoors. This is the river that caused all the fuss. And apparently there's a problem with beavers out of control around here, devouring wood all over the park. And I don't know how the gate's supposed to keep them out. They're pretty wily little things. Uh, so, go for a hike. This section of the sandstone is on an outside curve in an oxbow turn in the river and it's eroding away like crazy so my optimism for finding any actual petroglyphs is diminishing. However, I, I bet there were some in uh, originally in this area but it has been even since the park was established it's just crumbling away to nothing. And uh, I don't know, my, my I still got hope but uh, it, we may have to come back for a guided tour if we want to see anything of actual historical significance. Yes, walking underneath of this precarious precipice here, what could go wrong? This is certainly uh, rattlesnake territory. Uh, they're not out yet from what I've read, but their hibernaculum, I believe, might look something like this. Looks like a great little, uh, great little underground type of place to stay warm on a south-facing bank. These things are back for the season. They don't seem happy, as always. some that's starting to look relatively authentic um, including people looks like they've tried to scrape some of it off but I think we're getting somewhere looks like this hoodoo got started and there wasn't enough erosion to keep the party going but that would have been super impressive if the floodwaters had kept uh, eating away at it Wow unreal this is number two come on this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site Unreal. Okay, this is a trail for somebody, but is it a trail for me? Nope. Nice little picnic-y spot and a simple satiating sandwich in the sandstone. Yum. The wind is whipping up. It's starting to get colder. And I've pretty much given up on trying to find any authentic petroglyphs out here. So, I'm gonna get back, start prepping dinner up, because beautiful wife is getting a little hungry. She sent me a message, where are you? And I said, I don't know. Lost in the hoodoos somewhere. And uh, yeah, I'll see if I can find my way back. And then we'll start getting some food ready to go. interesting little piece of trivia about this park. We were in town and we learned that uh, the movie RV featuring the late great Robin Williams was filmed uh, around here and uh, got horrible reviews but if it's good enough background for a Hollywood movie 
should be a good enough background for a mediocre YouTube channel. One thing in this campground I'm very happy to see is the garbage cans. They're not bear proof. Um, so that means there should be absolutely no risk of bears around here. And I'm so used to camping in bear country. Uh, all I have to worry about now is rattlesnakes. In the search for ancient history, I did find one artifact here. I haven't seen one of these in ages. It's even got a dial tone. Neat. Looks like the change mechanism's broken out of it or something, but still works. Unreal. Okay. There's deer outside the tent. Oh boy, here we are again. Uh, gonna saute some veggies with a little red uh, Sinbin red ale. Mm -hmm. Beautiful wife doesn't really like green peppers, so I'm doing these separately because I like them. Uh, but uh, the red peppers and onions will certainly need a little flavor. See if these will cook on here. And we sit by the fire. Sure is a beautiful night. Uh, it's chilly, but by the fire, it's quite okay. Well, flashlight's running out of batteries, but we're gonna put a bunch of food into this uh, French bread loaf here. Got uh, sauteed peppers and uh, onions. Montreal smoked meat, uh, Swiss cheese. We'll put it in between the slices here, wrap it in foil, throw it on the fire. Can't get easier than that. Here it is, a humongous sandwich, uh, kind of cooked under the fire. I'll try and cut in between the uh, perforations and yeah, make a bunch of little sandwiches out of this. Okay, well, there we go. We got one out of there. Looks pretty good, actually. That's a decent looking sandwich. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This sandwich, um, I'll give a camping Michelin star on this, a hunker down Michelin star. This is uh, really, really good beautiful wife has already snacked on a few things and she's actually asleep so this will be a midnight snack or breakfast for her mm. could have stayed on the fire longer but uh, it is getting late and uh, it's still snowing a little bit I can see pieces of snow coming down so can't wait to crawl into the tent and hunker down for the night Extremely delicious meal, and 
I'm winding down for the night and ready to turn in. And it's probably about time because my flashlights are really running out of battery here. So uh, I will have to give a huge shout out, of course, to people who have donated to keep these adventures going. Uh, to the beer donation fund, or the gear donation fund, or the bail donation fund, or the gas donation fund. Uh, uh, it all makes everything really possible. So thank you all. And uh, I'm going to slither into the tent before the rattlesnakes do. And get up in the morning and wrap this thing up. Time to hit the hay. Good morning. That was two good sleeps in a row. It means I'm due for a bad sleep. And that'll probably be the next stealth one I do. So just warming up some water for coffee. Um, I'm using instant coffee. Uh, it's convenient. I know it's not as good. And I know it's probably not that hard to get a filter and just make it with the boiling water. But uh, camping, easy, done. A couple of scoops um, should be all right. So uh, I'll make an omelet. I got uh, still some of that leftover stuff from the nachos. So I can make like a nacho omelet thing. And uh, then we'll pack up and get out of here because we're right down to the wire. As usual, it is Thursday. And I should probably be actually uploading this video right now instead of um, making breakfast. But uh, yeah, I'll get it uh, uploaded this afternoon, probably two or three. Well, whatever time it's up now, I guess. So uh, yeah, let's do that. Not Bailey's, but it'll have to do. Yeah. It's not bad for instant, I'll say that. I'm gonna admit it, I'm not a good omelet maker. Uh, we'll see if this turns into scrambled eggs. Um, to be honest, there's probably a 50-50 chance of that happening. But that's one of the reasons I'm not on those shows where I compete against an actual chef on television. Let's see. This is the absolute wrong stove to be using for an omelet. It's got this conical flame. It's outrageously hot. I might just give up and make them scrambled right off the off <laughs> these eggs in a box. One of my usual mistakes with omelets is I make like I make them way too thick. Holy, this is burning on me. Well, it doesn't look good, but I've eaten worse breakfasts, that's for sure. Is it any good? Mmm. It actually is. Um, the taco nacho type uh, fillings are perfect in an omelet. Mmm. Yeah. I somehow didn't burn the eggs. Very strange, very strange. Yeah, that omelet hit the spot because I was rumbly in my tumbly. And uh, I'm gonna have to tear this down here. The downside with uh, the glamping setups, as people call them, is the sheer cubic feet of uh, stuff you have to bring. So I'm gonna have to shoehorn this back in the car. Uh, I won't put you good folks through watching that. Um, we'll just uh, slowly pick away at this. Then uh, we'll be off to wherever we're going next on this uh, little adventure, but uh, we found a pretty good stealth spot, so next week's a stealther. We're all packed up and that's a wrap. Uh, that's all we got for this week. Uh, please subscribe if you like watching these things that push the limits of what could possibly be considered camping. And in the meantime, beautiful wife and I wish you all a very good week and we'll see you next Thursday. Thanks for tagging along.